Hello and welcome to another fun-filled 3D Max tutorial. I am your host, FreeW67, and today I will be showing you how to loft a track using splines. Let's get started. Now, I like to use the infield line to follow. There's multiple ways to do this. You could choose the center of the track, you could choose the outside of the track. Personally, since I only do short tracks and I like to keep the infield flat, I, I use the infield to start. Alright, so let's go over and select line. And I'm just going to follow the corners of the X and then to the middle of the corner. Each track will be different, but just close it. Yes. I'm going to make sure Adapt is selected. Saw, saw it on someone else's video. Did it. It works. Why? I have no idea. I just know it works. So now we're going to select the verts. I'm going to right click, go to the A. And then we'll just go in and select each one and start to adjust. We're going to try to match this line as perfect as possible. If need be, you might have to add another vert in sometimes. So, just going to take a little bit of practice and patience, for probably for some tracks, just to kind of get it lined up as best as possible. If I was actually going to make this track, I would spend a little more time, maybe add a few more verts here and there, to try to get that pinpoint exactly on the line. So now that we have traced our infield, we're going to, I would go and, and measure the widths, just to see what we're dealing with. And this track's pretty, you know, the straightaway is actually... Uh, fairly close to the corners, but for this example, I'm going to exaggerate the straights and the corners so you can definitely see what's going on. So we're going to draw just a random line for right now. And what I like to do is try to get them on even. Always on zero. Let's say 30. 30. So there's no guessing when you're lofting. Just say 31. Let's widen that out. This will be our flat piece. So we'll put the straights at 10 meters wide. And then I'm going to set the, the pivot point. Pivot point to where it's going to loft off this line. And this is why I like to put it on even numbers. Makes it easy, no guessing. Now that we have this line, before we clone it to create some banking, I suggest we apply some textures to this line. So when we loft the track, just like when we do the walls, you can have the texture on it. So that's segment, select the track bit, scroll down. Even though it says one, I still recommend hitting enter. We'll do two. And we'll clone this line. Just call it, you know, high bank. It'll spline. Not only will we make it wider, we'll add banking. Okay. Let's select the track spline. Let's come up here to create. Go to the geometry, compound objects, loft, get shape. Okay, let's go down to skin parameters. Let's flip the normals, 
Let's make sure it loft it right. All right, walls on the outside. So let's get rid of that, and we'll just add some curvature to it. Okay. So now we have a basic flat track that's, what is that, 10 meters wide. So we want to add this in the corner. So let's track select it. Let's go over here. You want to select path steps. Yes. And then I know it's going to be hard to see a little bit, but there's a little yellow dot on the screen. And that represents that line we're playing with right now. And when you adjust that line, if you can tell, the, the little yellow dot moves. So let's move it to, we'll say roughly that's going to be the beginning of the corner. So what we'll do is we'll get a shape and then select a flat bit again because we want it to be that's the end of the corner and that is where it starts being flat. So now let's adjust it to go to the middle of the corner. See it's right there. Get shape. As you can see down here, now the whole track's banked. And the reason is, that's a flat section. And then I put the bank section here, so it's going to go banked all the way around to back to the flat section. So now we need to go over to the end of the corner. Uh, we'll say right about there, get shape, flat. You notice it went flat again. We'll do this on the same, same thing on the other side of the track. Get shape, go flat, let's go to the middle of the corner, go to the banked, go to the end of the corner, go flat. Let's rotate this real quick. Now you can see we have a flat track, the banked corners. So let's go over to top view. Let's put it, split it. So say our measurement was off, and we knew that uh, the the straights needed to be a little bit wider. So we can actually select that and adjust it out. And same for the corner piece. Let's say yeah, uh, you know what? It, we wanted a little more banking, and we wanted it a little farther out. And if you want it, needed this section to be different, well then you would make a piece to help adjust it. Uh, if you know the banking fairly well, then you can get away with it. So the more segments you have, the more control you have over different parts of the track, which is really handy in road courses. And then all you have to do is hit M, go here, and just drop the texture on the track. Now that the texture's on the track, you can right click, add a poly. And you can see the texture's not the greatest, so let's go back to top real quick, just so we can see it better. Just poly select one, select that ID. Go to X form. There you go. And do the wall the same way. But that's a quick and painless way to map the track and to loft the track. Now I would uh, go in before, usually I would probably just loft the track itself and then that way you can add cross sections a little bit better. But for this example I just wanted to quick and painless. Now your track is textured and ready to go. Any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them here on YouTube or over at my forum at nsrs.jellcentral.com. Thanks for watching.